All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the shop. Uh, it dawned on me last time that I did not actually show what what DRO I was using, and it is the eye gauging Easy View DRO. Pretty simple. Got your scale, of course, your brackets, which um, I've decided I'm probably not going to use these brackets. I've already had to modify on this one a little bit. I'm I'm just not happy with how long they are, so. For my machine, I'm going to make some new ones. We'll get to that. Here's the display. Pretty standard stuff. Um, you've got presets. You can incremental. You can uh, change between uh, millimeter. Let's see, that's inch. That's fractional. And then uh, millimeter, of course. And you can zero that. Pretty standard stuff these days. One cool thing about this one, though, I think might be cool was um, if I add another DRO if I replace my quill DRO I can stack them like you see in this picture here it actually comes with a little arm that this sits on and you can mount that and then it swivels in and out and you can actually stack them up together which is pretty cool they're they're cheap I mean relatively they're about 40 bucks which is um, cheaper than getting one of the multi-piece ones with the central display and everything but uh, we're gonna see how it works out just uh, giving it a test and um, I bought this off of Amazon of course All right, I just cleaned it up a little bit on the um, belt sander, and I'm going to mark my holes out. Where I think they need to go. Just kind of centering this by eye. It's pretty good. And I also want to put one in the center because I want to make sure that this piece is, is always mounted. Um, I'm still, I'm still going to tap three holes on the, on the uh, compound on the one side. That way I'm not fiddling around with this one, uh, with this block as I'm uh, making adjustments. It's just 
these will adjust and then a center bolt will hold the thing to them. I'm just going to use a 3 8 drill bit because I don't have a countersink. Take this cross slide apart. We've got three set screws and I need to back off. Wind it out. And I want to hold it because the gib is right here. If I remember correctly, and I think I did this the last time I did this, is in the center there's actually a ball bearing. Uh, and we're going to see in just a second. Let's take it off. Holding the gib in place. All right, so there's plenty of oil under there. That's good. While we got it apart, we'll examine the nut, and of course, I'll clean out all that crap. Yeah. All right. So there's our ball bearing. It doesn't dig the set screw into the to the gib, and it also helps it to be a little bit easier to turn and tighten up. So we don't want to lose our ball. All right, so here's my setup for the drill press. My most accurate um, drill press vise here. It is on the machine surface, bottom surface of the, the base of the drill press. Got my cross side in the vise. And then what we can do is see how close we are to the machine. So we're gonna put our little level, so digital level. Can you read that? I'm not sure you can or not. So the machine, that digital level is saying 89.1 on that side. Let's clean it, put it back, make sure we're still about the same. 89.1. I'm going to zero that. And then we're going to reference it with the chuck. And we're about 0.3 of a difference to the chuck. I think 0.3 of a degree. I think that's uh, acceptable. Okay, I'm going to punch the middle hole first and uh, then go ahead and drill it and mount it so that, that way I know that the other two are on perfect. We'll use our little block to keep the tap straight, pretty straight. See if we can get it started. The cast iron on this is pretty soft stuff. So it doesn't take anything really to tap it. Just need to make sure you keep chips out of the way. Actually, there might be enough. Let's go ahead and test her out here. Give it a shot. Uh, it's getting hard. Let's go a little farther with a tap. There we go. Nice. Do cut. Alright guys, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand this little mistake right here, so I made another one. So we'll call this one Mark 1 and this one Mark 2. And um, this can go in the scrap, I guess. Alright, next thing is, as I said in the introduction, I've decided not to use the brackets. The reason is, is because to get my holes in the right place, I would have had to put them uh, closer to the edge of the cross slide here, which I didn't want to do. Um, I need a little bit more depth. Probably could get away with it if I'd have put the holes a little bit closer, but I don't like having holes right up 
against the side of the uh, of the cross slide. So we're gonna make some new brackets. All right, so I got a couple of just off-cut pieces of steel. Uh, that's what is this? It's about two mil thick, roughly, or sixty thousandths, roughly. It's about the same as the thing as the brackets, I think. Yeah, about sixty thousandths. Actually, perfect. So, um, just going to use these off cuts. Now, I don't have any straight edges, so I'm just going to kind of wing it here. But all right, just measuring these brackets. They're about an inch and a half, an inch and um, five eighths, maybe. So I'm going to do see what a full ten inch, two inches looks like. Ten inches. Yeah, there we go. Let me see how square I can cut that. Okay, I just got a couple pieces of sheet steel cut out here. Oops. Just gonna mark where I want my threaded holes. I actually have a tap for this uh, that's the same as what was tapped in here. These holes are tapped. So let me uh, drill those and tap them. Made it a little bit thinner. And the original piece, so I'm kind of have to center it up on here. You know what would help? Help if I used all these damn tools I have in this shop. That's what would help. All right. I'll punch those, drill them, and tap them real quick. Make sure they're right before I move on. Okay, so that's a 440 thread, and it takes a number 43 drill bit to tap for the tap drill, uh, which is 0.89. I didn't have that. However, I did have one of these little center drills, and the end of this little center drill is just a hair off of... So, uh, that worked out for me. It actually left a little uh, a chamfer on the uh, one side, too, which was nice. So uh, let's try it out here. So screw. I'll work that thread a little bit. I should have cleaned it out a little better. Clean that thread out a little better and it'll be perfect. One good thing about everything being magnetic. All right, so the next thing I need to do is determine where my slots are going to be, where the bend's going to be, and where my slots are going to be. I want to go ahead and put the slots in before I bend it. So I think if I kind of carefully roll it over, I can get a good idea of where my slots need to be. course we're gonna go longer with them so okay here's my sketchy little setup to do these slots I gang the two uh, pieces of uh, sheet metal together when I and I drilled out roughly the center of the slot with a larger bit than what I'm going to use for an end mill held together with this vice grip uh, I've got a parallel under the here that goes through the center that won't hit they're not completely square, so I've got a piece of scrap aluminum that's on this corner just to make sure that we're nice and tight in there. By the way, I forgot to mention there was some shaking in the last video, and that was not the machine shaking. Uh, this shaking you see is the machine shaking. It does not do that when, when it's going, and it's all one piece, so what it's mounted to is solid and that, but that's not what you were seeing as far as shaking goes. What you were seeing was the camera mount shaking, 
which made it look like the whole thing was shaking, which it wasn't doing. I hope that that makes sense. Make sure we got enough bit here. Move. Make sure we got enough stick out, I should say. And then I'm not too far down in the vise. It's one of the things about this machine. You're going to have stick out somewhere. Uh, we're taking light cuts here. It's not going to be a problem. All right, that should do it. Let's tighten that up. Okay, so I've got the brackets on, front and back, that I just uh, bent up. Uh, I think I might have lost some footage, but hopefully not, of uh, finishing those up. But if not, I mean, all I did was put them in the bench vise and bend them over. Um, got them mounted on, and I'm just kind of testing how this goes. Looks good. Now, I don't have the reed head mounted yet. I can't find that piece. I, I have a piece that came with the kit that I was just going to modify to make that work. Um, and I've laid it down somewhere and can't find it. So it doesn't matter anyway because I'm going to end the video here. This is going to be long enough. I'm trying not to do, you know, 40 minute videos. And it's, you know, it, this is very simple, but it's it's kind of an, you know, it takes, it takes some time to do. And I'm only doing this piecemeal which is part of the reason I probably lost that piece. I'm just trying to do it as I have time. Okay, so next time we'll mount the reed head and um, clean up the brackets a little bit and try to figure out something we're going to do to, to cover this. Not sure what that's going to be like yet. Still thinking on that one. But anyway, appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll see you next time.